This is a guide on how to get better PSP performance on the TrimUI Smart Pro. The stock OS is pretty solid, but PSP performance is very lacking. Most games will only run smoothly at one times the native resolution on stock, and even then it may stutter and have some lag. By updating to PPSSPP version 1.17.1, We'll be able to play most games at two times the native resolution with very little frame drops. We'll be doing this by copying over the standalone PPSSPP emulator folder from custom OS builds like Crossmix or Tomato. I'll be using Crossmix for this guide. Crossmix and Tomato are modifications of the stock operating system with a lot of emulators and apps added or updated. I don't want to install the entire custom OS, so we'll just be copying the updated emulator. You can install the entire thing if you want to. Before we begin, we'll need to check if the TrimUI Smart Pro firmware has been updated to 1.0.4. You can do this by going to Setting, System, Device Info, Version. This field should have 1.0.4. If it does for you, you can skip to the next step, updating PPSSPP. If you have a version lower than 1.0.4, we'll have to update the firmware first and then install the updated PPSSPP emulator. Updating the TrimUI Smart Pro has two steps. The first is to flash the new firmware for the handheld. The second is to copy the updated files to the micro SD card. If you're using a new micro SD card, we'll need to format it to FAT32 first. If you're using an existing micro SD card, we just need to copy files over. Please do not format if you are updating a micro SD card you are using already, as formatting will erase everything on the micro SD card and you will lose all your ROMs and saves. Once again, if you are updating an existing micro SD card, do not format. For formatting, I like using GUI format. You can download GUI format at http colon forward slash forward slash richcrop.co.uk forward slash GUI format dot htm. Insert the micro SD card into a computer. I'm using a micro SD to USB adapter that came with my Samsung card. You can use a micro SD to SD adapter if your computer has an SD card slot. After inserting the card, start up GUI format. Make sure no window or app is accessing the micro SD card, as GUI format won't let you format if the card is in use. If you're using a phone, Android can format micro SD cards up to 32GB to FAT32, but for higher capacity cards, most solutions will require rooting your phone. Once you start GUI format, give Windows permissions to run the app, and then the GUI format window will appear. For the drive section, make sure your micro SD card is selected. I have a 128GB SanDisk card, and that's reflected here. You can leave allocation unit size at the default setting. For volume label, I like to name it after the handheld so I can keep track of which system the micro SD card is for. I'll name it TrimUI SP, short for Smart Pro. You can name it whatever you want. You can leave the quick format box checked. Press the start button and let it finish. After formatting a new card, or if you're using a pre-existing card, the first step is to copy over the latest firmware image for the TrimUI Smart Pro. You can find the latest image on the TrimUI firmware GitHub located at https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash TrimUI forward slash firmware underscore smart pro forward slash releases. You'll want the file starting with TrimUI underscore TG5040. The SD recovery file is for saving a bricked handheld, so we won't need to use that for now. The latest file as of this recording was TrimUI underscore TG5040 underscore 2024-04-13 underscore v1.0.4 underscore hotfix 6.7z. Use 7-zip to extract the files. 
you can find 7-zip at https colon four slash four slash www.7-zip.org. Once extracted, copy the TrimUI underscore TG5040.aw image file onto the root of your micro SD card. After copying over the firmware image file, the next step is to copy over the latest micro SD base package files. You can find the latest files on the TrimUI Assets GitHub. The website is located at https colon forward slash forward slash github.com forward slash TrimUI forward slash assets underscore smart pro forward slash releases. The latest file as of this recording was tg5040 underscore smart pro underscore sd underscore base underscore package underscore 2024-04-13.7z. Use 7-zip to extract the files. Once extracted, Copy all the files onto the root of your micro SD card. Now, if you guys have any custom retro arch config files, you'll probably want to back those up because they may be overwritten when you copy these files over. They'll be located on your SD card, retro arch, dot retro arch, and then config and auto config. Copy those two folders. Once all the files are copied, your micro SD card should look like this. Now safely eject the micro SD card and insert it back into the TrimUI Smart Pro. Make sure the handheld has enough battery life for this next step. It should only take a few minutes at most, but you don't want the handheld turning off while it's flashing the firmware. While the handheld is off, hold the volume minus button and press the power button at the same time. A green bar should show up. You can now release the volume minus button. Let the firmware update finish. Do not turn off the handheld during this time. After it's done, your handheld's firmware is now updated. If this was a new micro SD card, you can now copy over your ROMs. I would also calibrate the joysticks by going to Setting, System, and Calibrate Joystick. Now that our handheld and micro SD card files are updated, we can update our copy of PPSSPP. Turn off the device by going to Setting, System, and Power Off. Tapping the power button will only put it to sleep. Remove the micro SD card and insert it back into your PC. Download the latest version of Crossmix from the Cezia64 Crossmix OS GitHub located at https colon four slash four slash github.com four slash Cezia64 four slash Crossmix OS four slash releases. We scroll down. We'll see that the latest version as of this recording was crossmix os underscore v 1.1.0.zip. You'll want to download this file. I already went ahead and downloaded it. You're going to extract the contents using a program like 7-zip or the built in Windows app. I'm going to open that folder that we just extracted, navigate to MUSE, and it will want to copy the entire PSP folder. You can right click on it, select copy, and navigate to MUSE on your SD card. Select an area to the right here, and then right click and select paste. Now we're pretty much done, but there are some extra steps we can take to make it look a lot nicer. The default emulator icon will be blank. If you don't like this, then we'll have to copy the icon 
from our original PSP folder, navigate to our SD card, to the EMUS folder, to PPSSPP, and then we'll want to copy the IC-PPSSPP at 2x.png file. So right click on that, select copy, go into our newly made PSP folder, right click here and select paste. We'll need the config file to know that this is our icon file. So we're going to open the config.json file located on SD and use MPSP. We're going to be changing this icon field right here. What we're going to do is left click once on the PNG file. We just copy to highlight it. Press left click again to be able to rename it. And then we're going to highlight the entire thing and then press Ctrl and C at the same time to copy. We're going to go back into the config file. We're just going to highlight the name, not including the quotation marks and then hit Ctrl and V at the same time to paste. It should look like this after the change. Now, if you want a background image as well, you can choose to copy the original one. I opted to make a new one. Let me show you guys what it looks like. It's a very common Final Fantasy X wallpaper. Any 1280 by 720 PNG file would work. I use GIMP to crop the image to that resolution. Let's copy this file into our PSP folder. And once again, we're going to go into the config file. And we're going to change this background field to make sure it reflects our image. So once again, we're going to click on the PNG file to highlight it. Left click one more time to rename it. Highlight the entire thing and then press Ctrl and C to copy. Okay, we're going to highlight everything inside the quotation marks. And then we're going to hit Ctrl and V at the same time to paste it. And now our background file should refer to that Final Fantasy X wallpaper. It should look like this after the change. Once you're happy with this, we're going to hit Ctrl and S at the same time to save. And now we can exit the configuration file. We now have the updated version of PPSSPP. Insert the micro SD card back into the handheld and start it up. You have to hold the power button for a few seconds. Once we're in, we can navigate to PSP under emulators. We should see the icon image as well as our new background. Before we start the emulator, if you add any ROMs, make sure to press the menu button under the left analog stick and select Refresh ROMs. Otherwise, the games may not show up. Start a game. You can press X to change the version of PPSSPP if you want to. Press A to start the game with that version or press B to back out of the menu. 1.17.1 OpenGL is the version we want and it should be the default. Once we're in the game, press the menu button again to bring up the PPSSPP menu. Go to Settings, Rendering Mode, Rendering Resolution, and make sure this is set to 2x PSP. Most games should run pretty well at 2x. If the handheld is having a hard time, you can try lowering the setting to 1x. Most games will have a hard time running at 3x or higher, so I recommend keeping it at 2x at the highest. Under frame rate control, you can set frame skipping to 1 and enable auto frame skip if games are dropping frames. Under texture scaling, you can try upscaling the textures if you want to. For now, I'm playing around with the settings to see if I can make the games look better without affecting performance. I haven't tried out all the settings, but I'm trying out XBRZ at 2x. Under texture filtering, set anisotropic filtering to 16x. You can also try lowering the setting if a game is having a hard time running smoothly. Under overlay information, I enabled show FPS counter to keep better track of game performance when testing out different games. 
I turn it off when actually playing games, however. And that's pretty much it. Most games I've tested ran pretty well compared to the stock OS. Stock OS ran games terribly and most games only ran somewhat well at one times the native resolution. With PPSSPP 1.17.1, most games run very well and look visibly sharper with 2 times the native resolution. If you had existing saves or save states from the older version of the emulator that you want to copy over, you can grab the old save files and save states from these two directories, sd.config, ppsspp, psp, and save data for your saves, and then the ppsspp underscore state folder in the same directory will have your save states. You'll want to copy these folders into SD, MUSE, PSP, PPSSPP underscore 1.17.1, dot config, PPSSPP, PSP, and that's a directory you want to copy your save data and save states to. The PSP emulator saves files a bit differently, by the way, in that you won't see the game name but instead a folder with a number representing the game. You can peek inside and check out the screenshots if you want to know which save file is which. I would also recommend backing up any save files or save states that are important to you to your PC during this time. Even brand name reliable micro SD cards can still fail or have data become corrupted. This won't happen frequently, but it can still happen. As a side note here, PPSSPP version 1.17.1 does support CHD files. I didn't do any extensive testing, but CHD files seem to run pretty okay for the most part. Using CHD files will save you a lot of space on your micro SD card. For example, the Crisis Core ISO file takes up around 1.6 gigabytes. The CHD version is around 1 gigabyte. For a Persona 3 Portable, the ISO file takes up around 1.2 gigabytes. The CHD version is around 780 megabytes. This is a huge saving in space and will let you copy more games onto your micro SD card. Okay, that's the end of this guide. I hope you guys found it helpful. With the vastly improved PSP performance, in my humble opinion, the Trimui Smart Pro is one of the best handhelds you can get in the $50 range especially if you wanted to play PSP games. I did note some things in my limited testing, however. Metal Gear Peace Walker had a problem displaying fonts correctly. Letters would be missing or wrong letters would be displaying. I thought this was because of the official system font was missing, but I copied those files and still had the same problem. I also tried installing the game, but that did not help as well. I don't know if this is a problem with the CHD format, but I'll have to do more testing. If you guys know the solution to this problem, please let me know in the comments below. I also noticed some audio artifacts in Persona 3 Portable for both the CHD and ISO formats. It sounds like tiny intermittent static crackles when listening through headphones. I don't know if this is an issue with the game, the OS, or the hardware. I also noticed some minor graphical glitches in God of War Chains of Olympus. Another thing to consider is that the battery life does shorten significantly when playing PSP games. I need to do more thorough testing, but you can probably expect around 3 hours of playtime or so. The handheld also got slightly warm while playing for about an hour straight. Anyways, those minor issues aside, the majority of my playtime with PSP games was pretty smooth. Being able to run most games at two times the native resolution without any hiccups made for a great experience. I hope this guide helped. If you guys have any questions, tips of your own, or need any more help, please feel free to leave a comment down below. As always, hope you guys are staying safe and sane out there, and catch you guys next time.